What's up guys? It's like uh, day 27 of quarantine. I'm going crazy sitting in my room in Peru just uh, having a panic attack about uh, dying and uh, what's going to happen after we die. So I just wanted to uh, share some of my thoughts on that um, about the afterlife. Um, I took mushrooms one time <laughs> and uh, I had this sort of flash or epiphany of realization of what the afterlife was and um, since this day it's really changed the way not only I perceive this current experience but um, future experiences and my past experiences but what the mushroom told me was that this life now is the afterlife like don't worry don't be afraid don't be afraid. You've done this before. This is the afterlife. You made it. You're already here. And when you leave, you go to a new place. And you were in a different place before. And it was showing me how the steps my ancestors took, the, the collective ancestors, you know, the humanity and before humanity, all the way back to like this primordial soup of bubbling water in an ancient earth. Um, I was able to see like a timeline of our ancestors sort of just like morphing and changing and eventually like just looking down at myself and looking at my feet and stuff and being like I have always been alive through all, through all of that I've been alive and this is now like the current the current visible realization of my life you know, I'm now currently experiencing it in this centeredness of Dakota, of who I am now in this in this in this time. And before I had many different names. We all have. We've all had many different names and different stories. And here is this one. You know, um people always say, What's it gonna be like to go to sleep and not wake up? Alan Watts made a joke. He's like, kids, think about this. You know, I remember, I remember thinking about this as a kid. Like, man, what's it going to be like? You know, that's what death, you're just going to go to sleep and you're just not going to wake up again after that? And if you think about that long enough, you naturally will come up to another question of what was it like to wake up without ever having gone to sleep? And here we are. So it's safe. Ramdas used to say death is safe. It's like taking off a tight shoe. But it is safe. I mean, in the face of eternity, it's safe. What can happen? Krishna, Lord Krishna, said when Arjun asked to see his true form, because Krishna comes on as this flute playing little boy, well, you know little butter-stealing child, baby. Um, and Arjun says, Krishna, show me your true form. This is in the Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna just like turns into this, this basically kind of a monster with, you know, big teeth and the whole universe is being chewed apart in his teeth. And he says, I am time destroyer of worlds and I have come to engage all people and uh, there's another really good thing in the Bhagavad Gita where Arjun uh, where he is um, conflicted about going to war because it's a big story it's either, he has to go to war with his family Krishna comes on as sort of this guru figure and Arjun is like Krishna I don't want to fight my family what, like, what, what am I supposed to do and basically Krishna was like, you fight and you enjoy the fruits of your battle and, you know, you get this land or you die and you come to heaven with me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's just a happening, you know. We are in the afterlife of the stars. We are in the afterlife of the first moments. 
there is actually no afterlife. That's the thing, is that it's all just one happening. And that's kind of the point, I think, of that, that, that quote in the Bhagavad Gita, where it's like, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do, because it's all just a happening. And uh, there's no afterlife, because it's just a flow of life. And for some strange, peculiar reason, certain things gravitate to taking an identity. And uh, we all feel a sense of i You know, I'm sure a bug, like a fly, feels a sense of i If you pull its legs off or something, it's going to feel a, a sense of, of panic and, you know, all these sort of instinctual things that are just vibrating through us for some mysterious reason. How did they get there? What is the force that gives us these memories? You know, where do our instincts come from? And they come from a previous life you can think of. You know, you think of, like I was saying, how I was able to see all my ancestors on this mushroom journey. I was able to see how things they did that was beneficial to remember later in life is now being expressed through me, not only through my personality, but through my instincts. And that's where these instincts come from. They come from our previous experience, like a video game, like we're gathering experience, you die, you resurrect, and you have some of the useful knowledge of your previous incarnation. And uh, just like in a video game too, like where people start getting better, like as like a, as like a, you know, like the, the difficulty of how good people are getting starts to raise, everyone gets better. Everyone gets better because it forces you to raise the bar and to hit that standard. And life is the same way. You know, we're all in this co-collaboration of existence. And I was able to see how... For This is actually what I saw. I saw, like, um, being, a, being afraid of the dark. Like, I'm here in Peru, and uh, the kitchen is, like, in a different building. So if I want to go get food, I have to leave my room and walk down and go into the kitchen. And, like, it's just kind of scary to walk through <laughs> this place. I mean, we've got all kinds of crazy uh, psychedelic plants outside that feel like they're staring at me when I walk past them. We have a million stars out right now, and there's uh, the sort of ambience of the river that's a uh, 20 feet away. And uh, I was shown that the reason I'm afraid of the dark, and the reason that a lot of us are afraid of the dark or afraid of these kind of things, is because I was shown, like, tigers hiding in trees and snakes hiding underneath the bed. And... Um, it was useful knowledge for us to be afraid of these things because it makes us aware of the potential threats and thus this sort of genetic memory is passed down and uh, becomes a useful part of our life, you know. Um, it's a survival mechanism, essentially. Our whole, our whole personalities are a survival mechanism. The whole ego is actually an illusion. That's why there is no afterlife because there is no individual that's going anywhere you are not separate from the air you breathe from the ground that you are connected to this is all one thing this is all one thing happening so um, the sense of individuality that we feel comes from these sort of genetic memories of it's it's good to live in this illusion like you know i know there's no tigers out there or no monsters or anything like that like think about our irrational fears of like monsters with sharp teeth and shining eyes in the dark this is like tigers and stuff you know like they have the teeth and their eyes shine in the dark and that's where these these fears and instincts come from so like this illusion that our brain produces there's nothing out here that's going to get me but this illusion is um is a survival mechanism so our whole ego works this way. For us to survive, we've built these personas and we take them on as being truth, as being reality. But it's not reality, actually. It's just, it's just, um, well, you know it's not reality because you live your reality, I live my reality, and it's a subjective experience. It's not, this, it's not the foundation of, of being, you know, because we're experiencing two aspects of it from a perspective 
of I-ness. But the true way to understand all this, we'd have to be some, from some absolute position where everything is one thing. Which is like, I guess, our source or our essence. People always talk about like, uh, we come from the stars. Like, this is essentially the afterlife of the stars, like I said earlier. We do come from the stars. Science shows this, that the materials that make up our bodies come from exploding stars. Infinite, you know, unimaginable lengths and distances away from where we are now. But they gather together like little spirits, and they vibrate and, and hum the song of life, and then, pop, we sort of are the byproduct of this cosmic song, this cosmic dance through this giant cosmic orchestra happening, we are sort of puppeteers of some universal theatrics. And, uh, but people say we come from the stars. But I don't know why we stop there. Yeah, we come from the stars, and that's a beautiful thing to feel. You know, it gives us our power. Like, that's us. We come from there, and we're going to go back there. But even deeper than that, like keep tracing that timeline back. Don't stop at the stars because you're equally the conditions that made those stars and then the conditions that made those conditions that made the stars. And then you can keep tracing that back and back and back and back. And you get to a point where all things emerge out of a background of silence where all noise creeps through. That's what we are the fingertips of God or the Big Bang, whatever you want. I mean, it doesn't matter what you call it because it's all just words anyway. I mean, whatever that is, it's the mystery. And that's who we are underneath all of this persona and ego and defense mechanism that we've put up to navigate through this world. And it's fun, you know? Why wouldn't the universe do this? Why wouldn't the universe... Um, manifest itself in this way to where it can connect with itself and and sort of lose itself in some infinite creative dimension that is just it just goes and that's why there is no afterlife because it's just going and that's why i think it's safe we're safe in the face of eternity what can be taken from us what can anyone take from us? They're, someone's going to kill us? Like all these com these crazy conspiracy theories right now with like coronavirus and all of this, all of this New World Order, Illuminati. They can, they're going to take our body. Take our body. It's all a part of the, the orchestra of the universe. In the face of eternity, my body is already taken like Krishna chewing, chewing the worlds apart. It's already happening. We are currently in the mouth of Krishna right now being slowly digested so I mean what difference does it make we're gonna die anyway and I think it just continues maybe there is a part of ourselves that that goes along with it like a, a sense of like Dakota-ness and like maybe we will see our friends and family again. Maybe we relive this life until we become enlightened. But whatever is happening is is mysterious, you know? It, it's the most mysterious thing. I mean, I don't know how we have gotten to a point where we don't even acknowledge this. It almost seems like it's too strange to acknowledge. Otherwise, we'll have a panic attack like I said I was having <laughs> in the beginning of the video. Not actually, but... Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's so insane we can't talk about it. And if we do talk about it, we can only talk about it for a few minutes before it's like, okay, I got to get back to life and, you know, watching TV or eating food or something. Yeah. This is the afterlife. Every life is the afterlife. We are all one life. There is no separate thing happening. That's just a part of the dance, of the theater. You know, like you think about what would you want? Would you want to be alone? No. I feel like we must get our intelligence from somewhere, right? We must get these feelings from somewhere. So I can only imagine that as above, so below, that the divine architect of the universe didn't want to be alone because I don't want to be alone. And, you know, seemingly... 
seems like nothing wants to be alone. I mean, if you look at the planets, the planets are all hanging out together, spinning around. For some reason, we have little atoms that are hanging out, little balls spinning around. And why did they come together? Why did, why did this little mosh pit of atoms manifest itself through my body? Because I didn't want to be alone, I guess. And, uh... Yeah. Universe. It's right there in the name. Uni. Uni, like a unicycle. You know, one. One wheel. <laughs> this is one thing. This is all one thing. And verse. A verse is like a song. Or a poem. We are the, the divine poem of the one. The duality of non-duality coming together in the form of this YouTube exchange. It's weird, man. It's so bizarre. And we're all part of it. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta eat some of these pretzels after that. So, uh, yeah. Um, that was my thoughts about the afterlife. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Call me a stupid hippie. Okay. Um, follow me on Instagram. Uh, Dakota Wint. That's my name. And uh, hope you guys are safe. I hope your families are healthy. Um, be cool during all this crazy quarantine stuff. And um, Mm, what else? Yeah, don't trust Bill Gates. Um, catch you guys next video. Pretty cool, right? Crazy world, crazy world. Who would have known? Did you know that Lord Shiva listened to high tech?